Joey, why'd you stop so sudden? Don't you hear that? It's a horse, and he's stuck in that water hole. How'd he get down there? I don't know, but let's go down. Take it off his head. If Fury can't save that poor horse, who can? Maybe Jim will have an idea. We gotta get to a phone. The closest place is the McElmore Ranch. Bad chance we have a use in her phone. She won't even let us on her place. She's got to. This is an emergency. Take it easy, boy. We'll get help. Miss McGilmore. It's hard enough for a widow woman to look after a place without having horses and boys running wild all over it. Now get! See, I told you it's no use, Joey. Please, Miss McGilmore, can't we just use your phone? There's a horse trapped in a water hole right near your place. He'll die if we don't get help soon. That's no skin off my nose. Now get off my property, or I'll take more than my bloom at you. <laughs> Looks like big trouble coming. Yeah, or big appetites. It's almost lunchtime, isn't it? Jim, yeah. sure, we gotta get help quick. He'll die if we don't. Oh, wait a minute. One at a time. There's a horse bogged down at the water hole at Stone Gorge. He's sure stuck. Fury tried to pull him up, but he's too deep. We'll need special rescue equipment for a case like that. I better call Tom Dexter. Hello, get me Tom Dexter in town, will you please? Who's Tom Dexter? Well, he's the SPCA officer in town. SPCA? Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, Peggy. They know all about rescuing poor, helpless critters. Hello, Tom. This is Jim Newton. The boys just rode in and said there's a horse in trouble up near Stone Gorge.
know who he belongs to, Joey? I don't know, Mr. Dexter. Well, that doesn't make any difference. We take care of them all. Now, Mike, you can put him in the trailer now. Gosh, we sure appreciate what you did. Probably couldn't have saved him without you. <laughs> well, that's what the SPCA is for. Isn't it, Fury? <laughs> Gosh, I'd like to know more about the SPCA. Well, you would. Well, I just happen to have some pamphlets here. Oh, I'll tell you all about it. Huh? There you are. Thanks, Mr. Dexter. In the meantime, I gotta get back to town so I can take care of my patient. I'll see you all later. Bye. Goodbye. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. How come we don't hear more about the SPCA, Jim? Maybe they're too busy working to blow their own horn. Well, I guess we saw a sample of that this morning. Yeah. The way Mr. Dexter rescued that horse is real neat. You know, a couple of hard-sell press agents like you could do a world of good in getting contributions for the SPCA. Gosh, they must have lots of money, Jim. Did you see the expensive equipment they were using this morning? Well, all of that expensive equipment is financed by contributions. You mean that people donate to the SPCA like Community Chess and Red Cross? That's right. Boy, I bet we could collect a lot for them in this valley. <laughs> Now you keep out of this. Animals ain't supposed to know how to talk. Yeah, well, Fury can't, Pete, and uh, he just said that you ought to donate five bucks to the SPCA. Five bucks? <laughs> or maybe it was ten. I heard you the first time. Okay, you bandits, seeing us how such a worthy cause, I'll kick in with my share. Okay, there's mine. Gee, thanks, Jim, and I'll write you both receipts. All right. Well, now, look, you better keep a list of all the donations and who gave them to you so you'll have a record for time. Okay. Say, uh, Packy, what are you gonna give? Me? Of course you. This ain't no one-way street. Well, I was saving it for a catcher's mitt, but I guess the animals need it more. <laughs> there you go. Atta boy, Packy. Uh, well, if you two really knuckle down, you ought to be able to get a donation from every rancher in the valley. I know one we won't get anything from. Yeah, who's that? Mrs. McKilmer. The widow? Yeah, she's a real hard case, all right. Lives alone and likes it. Yeah, we tried to use her phone this morning when we found that horse. She wouldn't even let us on the plate. She waved her broom at us, just like an old witch. <laughs> well, I guess the SPCA can get along without a donation from Mrs. McGillmore. But if you two guys are gonna make any more collections today, you better get started. Yeah, we can probably hit all the close ranches this afternoon. All right. Oh, and be sure to keep a list of all the donations. Sure thing, Jim. And if he doesn't, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Welsh. Hi. Oh, hi, boys. Oh, am I glad to see you. Well, this is the first time I ever knew one of my horse-buying visits to cause so much excitement, Jim. <laughs> Don't look now, Paul, but I think the boys have an ulterior motive. Oh? Yeah, we're collecting for the SPCA. And we already got almost $50. Why? Right. Here's a list of everybody who's donated. Every rancher in the valley. But one. Well, bet I know who that is. Mrs. McElmore? She wouldn't give you a glass of water if you was dying of thirst. You're telling me. <laughs> I've been trying to get contributions out of Annie McElmore for years. I'll tell you what. If you can get her to donate to the SPCA, I'll triple whatever she gives. You mean you're not going to give us nothing unless she gives us something? Well, <laughs> what's wrong with that? That's a sporting proposition. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Jim. I want to look at that bait. Since when is getting money out of a witch a sport? What did I tell you about keeping off my property? We got something real important to tell you, Miss McGillmore. It's about the SPCA. The what? SPCA. Society for the Prevention of Cruelty. You don't need to spell it out for me, boy. I knew about the SPCA long before you were born. Well, then you will donate to them. I will not. But it's for... I don't care what it's for. Nobody ever did anything for me, and I don't see why I should do anything for anybody else. I say charity begins at home. It doesn't have to be very much, Miss McElmore. Anything will do. The only thing that'll do right now is for you to take them animals and get off my land. Well, someday your animals might be in trouble. I can 
take care of my animals and myself without any help from the SPCA or, or anyone else in this valley. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. But... Now get out! Okay, Miss McGillivore. <laughs> If she ever needed any help, she could fly for it on her broomstick. What was that? There's nothing, Miss McGillmore. Come on, Peggy, let's go. Three hundred forty-eight, three hundred forty-nine, three hundred fifty, three hundred fifty-one, and thirty-six cents. Boy. That's a lot of money for the SPCA, isn't it, Joey? You bet it is. Well, we'd have a lot more if Miss McElmore had given us something. Well, it's been over a week since you started your campaign. Maybe she changed her mind. That'll be the day. Well, it's like asking for the moon. Well, nothing in this life comes easy, you know. But if you believe in yourselves enough, well, you won't be willing to take the first no for the last word. It's no use, Jim. She won't give nothing to nobody. Oh, I can see you boys have got a lot to learn. What do you mean? However worthy the cause, you've got to work for whatever you get. We sure worked on Mrs. McGilmer, but it didn't Golly, give us any... Why did I think of that before? Think of what, Joey? Well, like Jim said, we've got to work for what we want. Okay, we'll work for Miss McGilmer. You're kidding. Why not? She lives alone and there's a lot of work to be done. So we'll do it and she'll pay us, and we'll give the money to the SPCA in her name. I think it'll work, Jim? Sounds reasonable. After all, Mr. Welch didn't say just how you had to get the donation from Mrs. McElmore. And then he'll have to pay us three times as much as we get from her. Well, how do we get our work for when she won't even let us on her property? <laughs> well, that'll be the neatest trick of the week, Packy. But if you can get around her and get her to pay you for it in the bargain, you've got it made. I'll never find out any sooner. Let's go, Packy. Mrs. McElmore? Mrs. McElmore, are you in there? I wonder where she is. Don't ask me. at the barn. Gosh, these animals haven't had food or water for days. I'll get some water. Like this. Search me. These, these animals sure need help. Look, you fill the water trough while I call Mr. Dexter. All right. Mr. 
deck just coming right over. Meanwhile, let's pitch some hay. any easier. Hey, looks like he wants us to follow him again. Maybe he knows where Miss McElmore is. Come on, let's go. Canteen, Peggy. Uh, 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 uh,
So Paul Welch said you'd never get any money from me. Well, he said if we did, he'd give us three times as much on top of his donation. Hmm. I never said you could leave yet. Anybody got a pen? There. Give that to your SPCA. Gosh, it's for $200. Boy, that'll help a lot of animals. Still think I need a broomstick to get around on? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, $1,100. I didn't know there's that much money in the whole world. <laughs> well, there's 500 for myself and 600 to triple what Annie McElmore gave. Gosh, Mr. Welsh, I don't know how to thank you. Well, don't mention it, Joey. You boys really worked hard for that check. And this, together with what you've already collected, will go a long way in our work. Our work? <laughs> I guess I better let you boys in on a little secret. Paul made me promise not to say anything until you finished your campaign, but he's a member of the board of the SPCA. No fooling. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, forgive me for pulling the wool over your eyes, but I was so sure that Annie McElmore wouldn't pay off that I'd have offered a thousand to one against it. <laughs> oh, hello, you're <laughs>